Do you want me to do the intro this time, then? Yes, please. Do it. Be it. Own it. Live it. Stace. Go. Bob. The Bob. Stace. Stace is the Bob. Do it, Bob. Bobby D. Bob. At what point am I supposed to go? <laughs> At any point. <laughs> okay, I was just wondering when you were going to stop so that I could go. <laughs> I, I probably wasn't. I probably was never going to stop, Stace, to be honest. It's the <sighs> infinity of bullocks. <laughs> oh, is that the title of your... Uh... Autobiography. It will be now. Very new to oh, the Infinity of Bollocks. <laughs> Read by Morgan Freeman. That'd be cool. Barry looked at his bollocks. The end. I really hope that that's not all you've achieved in your life. It's <laughs> 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 a point in an autobiography. It's like, oh, I once looked at my bollocks. People, welcome to Stace and Barry in the morning. I don't remember which episode this is because last time we just talked about Mortal Kombat, which was cool, and we kicked butt because we're butt kicking cool guys. Hey, welcome to Stace and Barry in the morning. I am the Stace half of that title there, and the Barry half is over there. Hello, Barry. Here's my butt. Kick it. Kick it, bitches. Kick <laughs> it. I don't know why I made the sound of a whip. I don't know. Given the What's, fact I said kick it about fifteen times. Yeah. I was I was I was thinking of a kick sound, but I don't think my mouth knew how to do that, so I just went whoop. Okay. <sighs> Sorry. That's all right. There's nothing, um, wrong with, there's nothing wrong with a whipping sound. I was just I was very worried that you were just gonna say there's nothing wrong with whipping my arse, and I just thought I hope soon <laughs> hears this. I hope your wife never hears this. What a Jeez. terrible state of affairs. It's <laughs> It will be that thing of like after I've after I've passed away and it's okay it's okay for listening love we've already talked about me passing away I'm gonna come back as a Ben Kenobi style character so mm-hmm. don't worry about it so um yeah we've already talked so in my head now I'll have passed away she will be bereft obviously um as all three quarters of the population and um she'll be sitting down listening to all my podcasts mm-hmm. and then she'll get to this one and she'll be kind of like oh Oh, oh, it's just so funny. I really enjoy it. And then it'll be you saying, making whipping sounds and me talking about whipping my ass. And she'll be just like, yeah. well, that's me over him then. Yeah. Just after we discussed how you died of your own bollocks. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which will obviously be um, surgically removed from this podcast. So you wouldn't have heard that secret. <laughs> what, your bollocks will be surgically yeah. removed from this podcast? <laughs> can we get away from my ass <laughs> and my bollocks and can we actually get on with the breakfast show? I can't believe people are going to be listening to this with their croissants and coffee. They're going to be so put off their coffee now. Hey, I uh, should do some trumpets and stuff, shouldn't I? If we're just yeah. going to move on. Yeah, just do the trumpet. Thing. Okay. Okay. Um... Should we do a pick of the fortnight first? Yes. Yeah, cool. let's do it. Go on. Cool, Don't cool, go. cool. Do you want to go first or shall I? I'll go first. Go I'll on, go then. first. You like wrestling, don't you? I do like wrestling, yeah. Good. This is just for you. It's not really. I mean, I'm just trying to find the link. Um, <laughs> have you uh, <laughs> Have you heard of a uh, comic um, called The Legend of La... Oh, I'm going to say it's wrong now. La Mariposa. I have got a copy of it sitting in my to-be-read pile. Yes! I'm very excited about it. Yes! <laughs> a link that actually works. God Woo. damn it. There's a segue. <laughs> so I read the, I've I've already read... I might have told you about it. I can't remember. I but I've already actually, read it. Yeah. yeah, I've already read it ages ago. And absolutely, absolutely loved it. And it's kind of about um, this wrestler... Mary Posey, she goes through all these sort of adventures. And, that, and basically her adventures are she just has wrestling matches with like supernatural beings 
and it's nice. awesome. It's just, it's just, and it's so funny. It's just, it's just proper laugh out loud funny. It's just, it's just my level of humour. And uh, and actually, the wrestling stuff is great. So if you are a wrestling fan, it's just, it, it, it's great. But he's bringing out. The, so this is done by um, James Lawrence, and he sent me uh, a copy of his next. This sort of follow-up, which is going to be called Legend of Mariposa, The Climb and Other Stories. This is like volume two. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's doing a Kickstarter for it. Uh, I don't know if the Kickstarter has kicked off yet, um, but I should put a link in the show notes. Or Stacey Walker should be doing the blurb. Um, <laughs> but he's also sent me a review copy of this, and I should forward you the review copy as well. So you nice. Can, you maybe next episode or something. And the blurb is a luchador, a luchador's. I'm rubbish with pronunciations today. You know that right. I'm going to say a Mexican wrestler because I can't say luchador's, <laughs> which I've just said. <laughs> Road to glory is a path fraught with danger. Bear witness to the further exploits of Love Mariposa in his collection of stories as the purple powerhouse meets a mystery atop a mighty mesa, battles a blood sucking beast in the beleaguered barnyard, subdues a sweet smelling skeleton, and more. Also, a thrilling tale from the archives of the Sons of Justice, which is basically the wrestling team. They're basically the Justice League of the wrestling community. Nice. Um, and it's all and I yeah, and I read this in one sitting, and I'd forgotten how much I'd loved the main character and just all the other side characters. And it's got a I can't remember what the goat's name in it, but James, if you're listening to this, you need to do a volume which is just the goat. <laughs> Because basically, the goat is like Batman. It's like if Batman had been turned. It's basically if Batman had been turned into a goat. That this is what you'd get. Perfect. And it is. It is like a little montage of the goat doing different things. It is, it's just. It is awesome. The goat makes it. It is the goat that nails it. <laughs> oh, okay, it's so good. Um, so yeah, it's a fantastic comic. Art is lovely. Really colourful. It's an all ages read. It's being described as a combination of Natural Libre, Lit Libra, uh, meets Samurai Jack with a dash of Steven Universe. So I've only seen one of those things, which is Samurai Jack, um, which was enough. That's um, the one I haven't seen of those oh, three things. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. <laughs> Boom. So together, we covered pretty... <laughs> uh, yeah, so it's it's great. I can't recommend it enough. Uh, Legend of Mariposa. And it shall be in the show notes. Nice. I'm going to have to dig out the first book so I can read the second one because yes. uh, I think I have a vague recollection though I could be misremembering it of you saying that the main character reminded you a bit of me and that is solely yes. why I bought it yes yes because <laughs> I am that narcissistic yes no no um, this, no no you're right now and again I was reading it and going but well, this is just this is just this surely <laughs> and it's great because she's obviously she's always masked so in my mind, it's it's you because like she never takes off a mask, so the the illusion isn't broken for me. Because in my mind, <laughs> she'll take the mask off, put glasses on, like it's Stace, everyone. <laughs> oh, that would actually be rad. I think I was yeah. in a comic once, but I don't. It was many years ago, and I don't remember. Mm. Okay. <laughs> Go read it. You'll love it. I will. I will. Maybe I will. All right. God. Yeah. Do it. <laughs> oh. Now that is exciting. My pick of the fortnight is a film that popped up on, I was going to say Netflix, and now I'm not actually sure if that's true. But it's definitely on one of the streaming services that we pay for. (laughs) 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 Ah, And it's called The Mitchells vs. The Machines. Oh, that's Netflix. seen it, Barry? No, I haven't seen it. Okay. Well, um, it's going to, like, I'm not going to spoil it. But the title sort of says everything that happens in the film anyway. It's I about a family. The oh, there you go. It, well, it's about a family called the Mitchells who are humanity's last hope against a robot uprising. Um, and it is a fucking delight. It's so much fun. Um, it's one of those films that, you know, when you watch something and you just feel really good at the end. Yeah. Because <laughs> um, there has been like. You know, and I'm not saying obviously that there's 
there's no place for sad films or whatever. But like, I, I'd I'd been going through a phase of watching like a lot of like either sad things or like horror films, and I was sort of getting myself into a place where I was like watching films and feeling like really grim afterwards. And I thought, Ugh, what am I doing to myself? Um, and when we watched this, and I was just like, well, that was a hell of a lot of fun. It's um, it's so super well made. The animation is absolutely lush, but the I'm not saying this is a criticism, but it is very difficult to keep up with what's going on like at all times. Right. And I think uh, I'm probably going to have to go back for a, like a rewatch at some point so I can really appreciate like a lot more of the details because it's so frenetic and there's so many like sort of um, cuts and like uh, speech bubbles and like sound effects and stuff that it sometimes it's a bit sort of like blur. <laughs> yeah, visually you're just like blur. What am I looking at? But it is so much fun. Uh, the family, the Mitchells, are like this little dis- dysfunctional but adorable family who are trying the best. Um, Danny McBride does the voice of the dad, and I absolutely love him so much. <laughs> He's like such an adorable dude. Um, there's an adorable dog in it. The guy who does the voice of Launchpad McQuack does a voice <gasps> of a robot in it. It's very good. <laughs> I oh, love no, Benny so much. No. Oh, I've just realised. I mean, I've, my, I'm happy with my pick of the fortnight, but he wanted to. I wondered why, why you didn't talk about why didn't I? Why didn't I? Why didn't I choose Ducktales? Why didn't you choose Ducktales? No, to be fair, the uh, the Legend of La Mariposa does sound really good, and we can potentially talk about Ducktales next time. Maybe we will. We will talk about Ducktales. Spoiler alert, guys. <laughs> make it, I've written it right down in pencils. That means it's going to happen. Dark I Tales. almost said uh, when you were going to do your pick of the fortnight first that I was like, I bet I know what this is, and then you took me entirely by surprise. <laughs> yeah, I think it's because yeah, this is because I, I read this this week and had so much fun with it. It was ever present in my mind whereas I yeah. watched Ducktales. I finished watching. Was it last weekend that I was hounding you with text? I think so. Yeah. 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 Um, now we will now we'll come back to DuckTales because I yeah. do want to talk to you about that. So oh, uh, good. yeah, <laughs> yeah. Next, next step. Excellent. Um, but yes, yeah, so the Mitchells versus the Machines. It's just like a really good uh, family friendly, like sort of. It's 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 a, an all ages film in the sense as well that there's a lot there to appreciate as an adult. It's not just like you know a kids movie that adults have to like gruelingly sit through because their children want to watch it. Um, and it has a gay lead character, which I really liked. <laughs> ah, okay. um, so, yeah, and uh, yeah, absolutely loved it. It's just a really good, fun, creative, exciting, funny time. Oh, well, right, right, I'm going to be watching that. Good. Do yeah. it. I'll read that comic and you watch that film and then we'll reconvene next time to talk about DuckTales and neither of these things. (laughs) 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 Just like any good podcast. In it though. Um, Do you fancy some more trumpets? I always fancy trumpets. Hit it. Uh, That was the start of the theme tune to the old UK sitcom uh, bottom, but <laughs> I'd realised halfway through that if I'd have that that bit on its own is very boring, but if I'd have carried on, it would have gone on for like a million years. And also, it's sort of like a almost freestyle jazz madness that I would never have been able to have captured with my own gob. So uh, gave up on it real early. Sorry, guys. <laughs> that's, that's fair enough. Oh, which segment would you like to do, Barry? Let's do. Musical musings. Musical musings. Put these in your ears. What have you chosen this time, B? Uh, no, you can go first. I went first last oh. time. All right then. Well, Boom. I picked a totally incongruous one. You know how, like, normally I'm like, oh, I watched a film and now the soundtrack, and like, or I link it to stuff we've been talking about. This time, it's totally incongruous, but it just happened to pop up on my shuffly Spotify recommendations type thing i don't know whatever that playlist is called that they shove at you every week (laughs) it's doomsday by murray gold from doctor who oh yeah this is a piece of music that um because i 
I really enjoy Murray Gold uh, and his Doctor Who soundtracks. Um, I <laughs> so uh, as much as I adore Doctor Who, sometimes I think the only good things about some of the episodes are those soundtracks. <laughs> Zing. Zing. Um, but this particular song is one that's it really appeals to me because it's actually quite simple in its melody, um, but it makes you feel all of the feels like <laughs> i can imagine that if you heard this song without knowing which scene it comes with in the show you'd still be like oh something awful's happening <laughs> like it's it's a it's very much a song that's like hey have you thought about having a cry today because <laughs> <laughs> now's the time because now's the time um and i'd sort of forgotten because i haven't listened to those soundtracks for yonks uh, I'd sort of forgotten that it's such a like powerful piece. Um, so yeah, it just popped up on my radar again, and I was like, Do you know what? It's real fucking good. This, so I put it on my old musical musings list. In it, I actually wrote down in, in my notes finale of season two. Bit fucking dramatic and sad in it. <laughs> Those are my notes. Pretty accurate. <laughs> and just sticking by them, and I love yeah, you man. for it. Okay. Yeah. It's so, my musical musing um, is quite an obvious one for me, but some explanations very quickly as to why I've picked it. So, um, this is based on, well, it's not based, this is taken from uh, my favourite movie. Were well, you waiting, waiting for me to say it? Oh, no, I was waiting for you to go. I'm not really, not really that surprised. <laughs> but the reason that I've picked from my favourite movie which is Raised the Lost Ark, is because mm-hmm. it is uh, 40 years old as of next month. Sheet off. Yeah. <laughs> um, which also means, obviously it shows my age, did it mass, is that I started writing um, after I saw Raised the Lost Ark, literally a few weeks after I saw it. Um, so that means I've I've been, my writing career has spanned 40 years also. So that makes my writing 40 Ooh. years. Yeah. So uh, I thought I would um, go back and pick one of the classics from this. So rather than picking the uh, main theme, I've picked Desert Chase. Um, oh. Now, this is the sequence um, where, I mean, I was loving this film. I, I, I can still remember vividly seeing it aged 11. And I, I, by the end of the first sequence, I was in. You know, when he's when he gets on the biplane and it's all and the music's going and it's the snakes there, I'm like, I'm it, whatever this, whatever's going on, I still don't know what's going on. I don't know who the dude in the hat is, I don't know why people are chasing him, but I'm in. <laughs> um But when you get to this sequence where it's just when you actually break it down, it is madness. Mm. He's just gone from having this fist fight with this bald headed dude and him getting like eviscerated by like a um, propeller and Indy's had his ass kicked to 10 minutes must have passed and he's like on a on a like brilliant white Arabian stallion riding off into the desert after this like convoy convoy of Nazis mm. um, carrying like you know one of the most deadly supernatural objects in, in, in like humankind and he somehow manages to like defeat the entire convoy and still the arc back. And it's such a... It's like my favourite action sequence. And I've seen action sequences that have come since that have used, you know, a lot more money, a lot more special effects. But just the, the style of it is brilliant. And mm. a big part of that is the music. It just knows when to, like, hit you with that Raiders music, um, the main sort of theme, the Raiders or the Raiders March, as they call it, and to when to go a bit quieter and to when to sort of lead you into that you know we're going to do another big bit because it was this film again where i fell in love with music and mm. i remember there's the bit where he gets thrown out you know the bit where he goes it's that famous bit where he goes under the truck yeah i remember he goes under the truck and then the music goes it it switches up and it goes dum 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 and you know and it's it's basically telling you the raiders march is coming back and yeah. I remember nudging my brother going, yeah, he's going to get his fucking ass kicked now. Because <laughs> <So, so, laughs> the music's come on that. You know I mean? He's like, it's all over for that guy. 
he doesn't even know what's coming. He just he just kicks him with his size nine. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> so, um, it's, yeah, I, I've rambled on long enough. It's a, absolutely, it's one of my all time, it's like even my top three favorite pieces of music. Probably even more so than the actual Raiders March. Um, wow. And it's taken yeah. you a million years to pick it on this. <laughs> yeah. It's because, well, I think one of the reasons why is because I didn't want to, like, when we, decided to do musical musicians was that I didn't want to start just going let's do Star Wars let's do Indiana Jones let's do Superman because they're like the obvious picks yeah and even when I did this I was torn to be honest between the Raiders March um and the Desert, Desert Chase um and Miracle of the Art which is another great one um but I'd settled on Desert Chase because I think that was when I really that scene of Indy just on the horse just riding after the, the arc, I was just like, and I remember the whole audience was like cheering as well, and I was just like, this this film, this 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 fucking film, that's that was my review. It's like this fucking film. <laughs> um, so yes, it's a pretty uh, good review to be fair. Yeah, yeah. So uh, Desert Chase, Rare's Lost Ark, Music Musings, that's mine. Job done, baby. Boom. I thought you were going to do a whip sound effect. That would have been. Quite <laughs> Um, yes. <laughs> uh, trumpets, that's what I need to do now. Bump. Uh, extra, extra, geek all about it. Come and get your geeky news, your slags. <laughs> <laughs> What I love about that is every time I do it, I do put my hand to my mouth like I'm shouting it in the street. <laughs> See, in my in my in my head, somehow you kind of regress about like like you're suddenly like some twelve year old urchin on the streets and you've got braces and like a pe- that's what I'm seeing like a flat cap and you're like and you've got papers under your arm. We no all about it. paper governor, paper governor. Oh, fucking hell. some geeky news you've taught. Yeah, <laughs> chestnuts. Any roasted chestnuts? Oh, oh roasted geeky news, love. Um, hey, I've got a little bit of geeky news. Cool, I've got a little bit of geeky news. Put your excitement it. pants on. Um, <laughs> I don't know where that came from. I'm very sorry. Um, I am a bit excited, lads, because this week a trailer. Well, I say a trailer. It was very teasy in the sense that there wasn't much trailer about it. Um, dropped for three films that are coming out on Netflix. Uh, based on the R.L. Stein Fear Street book series, Are you aware of this? I'm not aware. I'm not aware of the books. Okay. Well, when I was a kid, I was very much like a a, a point horror R.L. Stein goosebumpsy kind of gal. Like I loved a bit of stuff that was going to make me poo my pants a bit, but not not enough that my parents would not let me have the books anymore. <laughs> and the the Fear Street books. I mean. The reason this trilogy of films is intriguing to me is because they haven't really said exactly which books they're going to be based on or whether it's going to be sort of like an amalgamation because I'm sure there was about 20 Fear Street books or maybe more than that and there were spin-offs and there was all sorts of other stuff but they were like teen horror books about some kids set in uh, a fictional town called... Oh, no... I want to say it's something like Shady Town or Shadyville or something. <laughs> Shadyville. <laughs> yeah. Shady Vale. Oh, I can't quite remember. Um, it was a million years ago and I have got a crap memory. Um, should have written it down, but I didn't. Sorry. Um, but these films, the, the teaser trailer has is, is, is teased that the first one that's coming out on the 2nd of July is set in 1994. The second one that comes out a week later on the 9th is set in 78. And then the next one that comes out on the 16th is set in 1666. So I'm imagining that's going to be witch trial related. Um, yeah. But there's also like rumours banging around the internet that these might be R-rated <laughs> versions of these stories, which oh. seems insane to me. So I am quite excited. <laughs> So, yeah, get some... Uh, I don't know why they're releasing them in July instead of October, but, you know, I'll take it because I like films. <laughs> and July is soon. <laughs> Which is good. Yeah, it's good. Okay. Um, Do you uh, want to know what my little bit of news is? I do, yeah. I'm doing a little dance in anticipation, but nobody can see it. Okay. <laughs> Just wanted you to know. <laughs> All right. Um... Did you ever play the um, Injustice video games, DC? 
Okay, I haven't, but I have seen people play them, so I am aware okay. of the point of them. <laughs> okay, that's good. Um, I played them. I actually really dry, I, I kind of had gone off the boil of, on one-on-one fighting games, and really the first Injustice game kind of brought me back around to them. Yeah. Um, and I really enjoyed them. Actually, um, it kind of showed me that you could you could build in a really good plot with a really good game, a really good one-on-one fighting game where literally you get a cutscene and you just go to like kicking the shit out of someone and then you go back to another cutscene, <laughs> which on paper doesn't sound particularly entertaining. But I really enjoyed Justice and Injustice and the second one as well. I really enjoyed it. Mm. Um, anyway. DC are developing a animated film. Oh, yeah. Okay. It's going to be called Injustice. Uh, shocker. Now the blurb is: the story is set in an alternate DC universe with the Joker trick Superman into killing his wife Lois Lane and their unborn child. Um, after that, Superman rules the world as a tyrant, and Batman ends up leading the resistance against Superman in an effort to end his tyrannical regime. Okay. That sounds weird. <laughs> it, I mean, it, it it does sound weird, but it and certainly what they do with the um, the second game as well, which is really good. Um, they sort of move on a little bit. It, the whole kind of Superman as a villain thing, you know, is kind of been done. But I kind of quite like the way they did it in um, the games. Yeah. Um, but also, say you want about DC films. Th- the DC animated stuff, they don't really put much of a foot wrong with this. I don't know that I can agree with you on that. <laughs> okay. Just just because I haven't seen most of them more than anything else. <laughs> okay, that's, that's fair enough. <laughs> that's okay, not well... me raining, like, peeing on your parade. Well, that's that what I was waiting shit, for. You fucking idiot. Yeah, well, no, I don't know. know. <laughs> okay, well, okay, take it from me then. Most of the, you know, the majority <laughs> of the DC films have, have been really good. So, mm. off the basis of that, I'm quite excited about this. Excellent. Well, on that note, lovelies, uh, thanks for listening to Stace and Barry in the morning. We didn't talk about DuckTales, but we will next time. DuckTales. Thanks. <laughs> Every day they're out mm. there making DuckTales. Woo! Mm. What a great theme tune. Oh. Uh, anyway. Anyway. Um, listen to our great ending theme tune as we go. <laughs> there'd, be no, there'd be no singing over it, unfortunately. But, yeah. No. Sorry. Well, I mean, we could sing over it, but I don't have any words prepared and it would probably go really badly. So instead, I'll just say, do us a tweet at Stacey's Parlour at Geek Syndicate. Send us an email at stacenbarry at gmail.com and listen to our Stacey and Barry playlist that's on Spotify that I'll put a link to in the show notes and have a ruddy good Saturday slash whatever day it is that you're listening to this. Lovelies, we love you. Bye-bye. Bye, all. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Now. I just drew that the real sound. Bye-bye. <laughs> I sounded like a, like a children's TV host then. You did? Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Around the towns and houses, rainbow flying high. Rainbow.